the moon, Earth's closest companion. The moon is Earth's closest natural satellite, located about 238,000 miles away. Moon's phases and cycles have fascinated humans for centuries, with its gravitational influence on tides and its role in lunar eclipses. The moon has a rocky surface with impact craters, mountains, and plains. It is also rich in minerals such as iron, titanium, and helium. But is it possible for humans to live on the moon? Few could have predicted that nearly 50 years after Apollo 17's return from the moon, we would still be waiting for another person to lay foot on our celestial neighbor. In reality, the majority of people at the time believed that by this point, humans would have settled on the moon. But that dream has stalled. It would be extremely expensive, risky, and technologically challenging to send people to the moon. Since the Apollo missions, space agencies have prioritized developing more affordable and secure robotic explorers. The moon does not have a significant atmosphere like Earth. It has an exosphere, which is an extremely thin layer of gases that are not tightly bound to the moon's surface and escape into space. The exosphere of the moon contains very low densities of gases, such as helium, neon, hydrogen, and argon. However, the atmosphere of the moon is not dense enough to support human life without a spacesuit or a pressurized habitat. The lack of atmosphere also means that there is no weather or wind on the moon. The temperature on the moon varies widely between day and night due to the absence of atmosphere, which means that there is no way to trap heat on the moon. During the day, temperatures on the lunar surface can reach up to 260 degrees Fahrenheit, and at night, temperatures can drop to as low as minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Making air that can be breathed in comes first. Surprisingly, this is not too difficult because the lunar soil contains 42% oxygen. Robots can collect this oxygen by using heat and electricity. Already, NASA has created and put to the test in the real-world prototype robots that can play this part. Any survival training expert will tell you that water is next on the list. Water is two-third hydrogen and one-third oxygen. At present, the only option would be to send regular supply ships filled with liquid hydrogen and then mix them together. A better solution would be if we could find water on the moon. Though the moon has no liquid water, in 2018 NASA confirmed it does exist on the surface in ice form. Rovers could find, drill and gather this ice. The hydrogen and oxygen in this water were extracted by the settlers and used as rocket fuel. Additionally, they would set aside some for cultivating food, another essential component of existence. But this raises another issue. Can there be plant life on the moon? To survive on the moon for an extended period, people will need a way to produce food. One way to secure a continuous food supply is to regularly ship supplies from Earth. But relying on food shipments would be costly and inefficient and would require some serious ingenuity. An alternative could be to grow food on site, which would give inhabitants access to fresher options. As you can probably guess, growing food in space is quite different from planting a vegetable garden in your backyard. Before we can live on the moon, we will need to solve several problems that come with planting food in space. The high radiation levels on the moon represent yet another potential barrier. Particles can reach the lunar surface and harm plants because the moon lacks the same dense protective atmosphere as the Earth. To cultivate plants on the moon, some form of shield or blocking device, such a lunar greenhouse, may be required. Additionally, the moon's harsh environment, including extreme temperatures, high levels of radiation, and micrometeoroid impacts, would require advanced shielding and protective equipment. Despite these challenges, there are plans to establish a permanent human presence on the moon in the coming decades. NASA's Artemis program aims to land the first woman and next man on the moon by 2024 and establish sustainable lunar exploration by the end of the decade. NASA's Artemis program is an effort to place astronauts on the lunar surface and develop an ongoing presence there. NASA will establish an Artemis base camp on the surface 
and a gateway in lunar orbit to aid exploration by robots and astronauts. The Gateway is a critical component of NASA's sustainable lunar operations and will serve as a multi-purpose outpost orbiting the Moon. NASA has completed several successful test flights of the Space Launch System, Rocket, and Orion spacecraft, which will be used to transport astronauts to the Moon. The Artemis III mission, which will land humans on the lunar surface, is currently in the planning and development stage. With NASA working on designing the lunar lander that will take astronauts from the Orion spacecraft to the surface of the Moon. In addition to NASA, other space agencies and private companies are also pursuing lunar exploration and settlement efforts. The European Space Agency is developing a lunar lander called the European Large Logistic Lander to support lunar exploration and eventually a lunar base. Meanwhile, private companies such as SpaceX and Blue Origin are also working on developing technologies and vehicles for lunar exploration and colonization. Overall, the Artemis program and other lunar exploration efforts represent an exciting frontier in space exploration with the potential to expand human knowledge and capabilities in space, as well as pave the way for future exploration of Mars and other destinations in our solar system. I hope you liked the video. If you want to watch more content like this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.